Miles Morales is trying to be a kid and be Spider-Man, which of course is making his grades slip. So what did his parents do? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and then I break them down before I read them dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel, text, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. Now, this is issues three through five of Spider-Man, the Miles Morales story. It takes place after our first episode, in which he got to hold Captain America's shield and fight against a demon from another dimension, but it does take place before Civil War II. This is the storyline right before that, so we'll be getting to the Civil War II storyline very soon, but I hope you guys enjoy. When we last left off, Miles' grades were slipping and his grandmother was called in. Miles' father, Jefferson, tries to tell Gloria that maybe she's being a bit too harsh and then she yells at him. Gloria then goes back to yelling at Miles, asking who does he think he is getting these kind of grades. In a Miles' mind, he wants to scream, I'm Spider-Man, but he can't. Before Miles could even try to defend himself, Gloria takes away Miles' phone. Miles' mother, Rio, then says actually he needs that phone. He does live on campus during the week. Gloria tells everyone that he can get his phone back after he earns it, and right now it's time for him to do some homework. With that, Miles heads upstairs to his room, slamming his door. But as he lays in bed, Miles begins to think about how maybe he should just leave. Maybe he should go live with the Avengers. What is he supposed to do now without a phone? What if Iron Man calls or Miss Marvel? Back downstairs, Rio tries to tell her mother that maybe she's being a bit over the top. Gloria tells her that she is the one who called her over here to scare the boy straight, and she is still keeping his phone. Just then, the doorbell rings and Rio answers it. A young girl says hello, her name is Lana Baumgartner, and she's a friend of Miles. Rio tells her that Miles can't come down to the door at the moment, and then Gloria swings the door open, asking, What are you selling? Lana asks her, I'm sorry? And Gloria goes on asking, Uppers, downers, is it the pot? But as Rio tries to stop her, Gloria slams the door shut, stating that the girl looks suspicious. Both Miles' parents stare at Miles' grandmother, and Gloria finally puts it together. Miles is the drug dealer! Jefferson shouts that he's had enough of this, he's leaving. But as both Jefferson and Lana go their separate ways, a hooded Miss Marvel watches. Once the coast is clear, Kamala Khan extends her neck and shouts, Boo! at Miles through his window. Just as Miles begins to ask what the hell, the head disappears and then there's a tapping at the window. He looks down and he sees Kamala shouting to let her in before she gets blown away. After letting her in, Miles asks, what is she doing here? And Kamala says that they were supposed to do a superhero neighborhood recon. But wait, are you grounded? Miles says that it's kind of embarrassing, and Kamala tells him not to feel bad. Her father would ground her to menopause if he found out that she was talking to him. But before Miles could even think about sneaking out, Gloria shouts, Who are you talking to? The bedroom door flies open as Gloria starts to look around the room, asking who he was talking to. And Miles tells her that since she took his phone, he has no one to talk to. Gloria hugs Miles, telling him that she's doing this for his own good. He needs to straighten up and let Jesus guide him. But as she leaves, Gloria also says, stay off the drugs. Once the door shuts, Miles looks around and Kamala shouts from outside that she's right, he needs to study. So rain check on the team up thing. And also stay off the drugs. Meanwhile, over in the Bronx, Felicia Hardy, AKA the Black Cat, heads over to a restaurant that Hammerhead is dining in. After knocking out one of the bodyguards, she tells him that she's got a deal that she would like to tell him about. It involves the new Spider-Man. The next day at school, Miles' teacher tells everyone that she has an announcement to make and she would like everyone to welcome a new student into their class. From what she's told, she hears that he's kind of famous. So please welcome Fabio Mendina. Genki gleams with excitement because it's gold balls. He's like the coolest superhero ever. Miles looks at him and Genki says, of course, after Spider-Man, right. A little later at lunch, Genki begs Miles to come home with him and talk to Fabio. Miles then asks, why does he have to go with him? And Genki tells him, well, because I'm shy and you're one of them. Miles stares at him and Genki says, you know, a superhero? As the two go on, Genki says, you wouldn't understand. You're not bigger than you would like to be. And Fabio is, well, however, before they can go further into the discussion, a gold ball flies down into Genki's lunch. Fabio runs over telling him that he's so sorry he was just showing off to the other kids. And Genki tells him, it's okay, I'm actually a huge fan. So Fabio hands Genki a napkin and Genki tells him that him and Miles actually have a lot in common. Fabio asks, what does he mean? Is he a mutant? And Miles says, no. And Genki says, no, what I mean is, Miles stops him and Genki says, it's cool, we can tell him. Fabio says that if he's a mutant or an inhuman, that's cool. But Genki plainly says, he's Spider-Man. Miles' mouth drops. His friend just told somebody his secret identity. And he tells Genki to say that he's joking, but Genki tells him, it's cool, we can trust him. Fabio looks at the two of them and asks, what is this? Genki holds out his phone with an article about Spider-Man and says, no, seriously, he's Spider-Man. 
Fabio goes on to tell him, if this is for real, Miles is right, you really shouldn't have told me that. Miles storms off and Genki says that Miles has been acting weird lately and he figured that he could use some friends to relate with. But then Genki says, you know, just throwing this out there, but do you want a room with us? And Fabio smiles, telling him, absolutely. Outside, Miles swings through the city to get back home, thinking about how he doesn't think he's ever been this mad at someone before, and suddenly his spidey sense goes off. He looks around to see four missiles coming straight for him. All that Miles can think about is that he needs to get away from the civilians. So as he goes higher and higher up, he realizes the problem. As he gets high up, he has nothing to web onto. The missiles get closer to him, and Miles activates his camo, and the missiles fly by. Then they turn back around and head straight for him. One of the missiles shoots by and hits a building. So Miles swings over to the Parker Industries building, trying to figure out who could have done this. Was it shield or is it that thing that isn't shield? Hydroxycut, Hydra. Yeah, that's it, Hydra. Miles thinks other than himself, who else has enough hate for him to blow him up right now? But before Miles can even come up with an answer, the missiles explode, knocking him out of the air. His body falls to the ground and everyone gathers around to see. And just then, a van pulls up and someone with a gun starts to fire into the crowd. Everyone begins to run away and then Hammerhead steps out stating, this actually worked. We should call that black cat team and tell her to open up that checkbook. Meanwhile, back over at the academy, Fabio takes Genki up in his offer to let him crash there. After letting him in, Genki asks Fabio if he's sure that he wants to room with him and Miles after that embarrassing display. Fabio tells him, yeah, that was kind of embarrassing. Genki stops for a moment and says that he really shouldn't have betrayed Miles' trust like that. And Fabio tells him, well, we all just met and all, but no, you really shouldn't have. Fabio then goes on to tell him, well, good news is that you were right and I'm not gonna tell anyone. However, as the two of them continue to talk, a notification goes off in Genki's laptop. Fabio asks what it is, and Genki tells him that it's a vlog that he follows. This girl who's totally obsessed with Miles ever since his costume ripped open on camera. As so the two of them watch the video, she says that she just received shocking images moments ago. The screen changes to show Spider-Man laid out on the ground in a pool of blood, and then a group of men got out of a van and dragged him away. A short while later, Felicia and Hammerhead stand in front of Miles. She says that he's really knocked out cold, and Hammerhead asks if he should shake him awake. Felicia tells him that she would rather him not, but right now they need to check his fingerprints to see how much this kid is really worth to them. She calls over to her assistant to scan his prints, and he begins to work as he takes off one of Miles' web shooters. The man then holds the scanner to Miles' fingers and says, Uh-oh. The man says this kid has no records of any kind in any systems, local, federal, or Interpol. Hammerhead says that he's just never been pinched yet. And the man says that it's more like there's nothing on him. Anywhere. Felicia realizes that this means that this kid is connected. And the man says, this kid is shield. We need to get him out of here like 10 minutes ago. But as the man pulls his hand away, he feels a small prick, like something bit him. Felicia asks what's wrong, and the man suddenly begins to get electrocuted. After looking around, Felicia asks, what did he do? And Miles tells her, hang on, trying something. Just then, Miles' eyes begin to glow, and he releases a massive electric shock breaking out of his restraints. She shouts, the other Spider-Man couldn't do that. And Hammerhead says that he's got this. After a moment of preparation, Hammerhead head runs in, headbutting Miles in the stomach, slamming him into the wall. He then holds Miles up, ready to punch him. But before he can get a swing in, Miles wraps himself around Hammerhead's arm and he shocks it. Just as the grip loosens, Miles kicks Hammerhead in the head. And as he lands, Miles realizes that he just broke his foot with that one. Felicia watches and decides that it's time for her to leave. And Miles aims his web shooters and shoots. Except he's got no web shooter on that arm because they took it off. But before he can aim with his other arm, Hammerhead charges back in, ramming Miles in the back. He continues to swing and Miles begins to think that the Venom Blast should be taking effect right about. And that's when Hammerhead stops. So while the Venom Blast goes through Hammerhead's body, Miles gives him a swift kick in the butt and follows after Felicia. He calls out to her as she hops onto the rooftops, but she stops and tells him that she would stop right there if she was him. He stands there asking, why? Why did you come after me? Felicia tells him bluntly because she's trying to run a business and he's bad for business the moment that he put the costume on. She goes on stating that she knew he was an Avenger. She just didn't know he was that connected. Miles says that he really doesn't know what that means, but she's under arrest. She tells him cute, but he doesn't get to do that. He's a vigilante. But hey, when he gets older, come find her and she can show him how to make some real money. But come after her again. Miles tries to shout that she's going to jail, but Felicia jumps off the rooftops and Miles sees that she's now disappeared. A short while later, some officers head out for the day when they notice Hammerhead and his men all webbed up on a lamppost. One of the officers says, no note? Who doesn't leave a note? Back in my day, Spider-Man would always leave a note. It was completely inadmissible in court, but at least it was polite. Back over at the academy, Genki and Fabio find Miles sitting on a bench. Fabio says that it looks like a guy with a big head dragged him away. And Genki adds that they were running around looking for him. He then sits down and tells him he's sorry. 
Miles stops him and says that he knows, but they need to talk this out, including Fabio. As the three begin to talk, the sounds of clicking can be faintly heard. And across the street, a woman sits in her car taking pictures of the three boys. Now, directly after this, we go into the Civil War II event, which did have some ramifications for Miles, you know, since the vision said he was going to kill Captain America. But other than that, this is pretty much where we are with Miles Morales right now. Now, personally, I like Miles Morales because I like the fact that we can have Peter Parker be an adult and have adult problems, but we get Miles, so we still get the classic kid Spider-Man. It's great. I love it. We get the best of both worlds. And if you want more Spider-Man, then make sure you subscribe to the channel to get your dose of Spider-Man when we put it out. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Comic Story and on Instagram. Instagram, and I'll see you next time right here.